Now recently, after saving up all my hard-earned money, I decided I needed a new wristwatch. And I came to Switzerland, of course, to purchase it. Today I've taken the short drive from Lausanne to the town of Fleurier to visit the home of one of the most recognisable luxury wristwatch brands in the world. I had the honour of interviewing Michel Parmigiani. Michel, what is the history of watchmaking here in Switzerland? It came as a result of revoking the famous Edict of Nantes in France, where many craftsmen seeked refuge in Switzerland during the Renaissance, particularly Geneva, in order to establish their profession. This was the origin of watchmaking in Switzerland. Switzerland is a, is a small country. How has it been able to produce so many fantastic watchmakers? Watchmaking developed in the mountains of the Jura due to its climate, which experienced about six months of winter. Locals were herders in the summer and watchmakers in the winter. This was in order to exist and make ends meet living in the mountains which, until then, had been abandoned during winter. In order to stay in these mountains, you had to find an indoor activity. Watchmaking was perfectly adapted to this. There are many fine brands of luxury watches here in Switzerland, the likes of Patek Philippe. What makes Parmigiani different? This brand was established in a region which was badly struck by an industrial crisis, a dark period for employment in this field. But also, it's a company far removed from a capital or big city. It's quite an authentic element to it as craftsmen came to settle here and develop the company, creating an environment which allowed us to create these unique objects. It must be known that there are companies that only assemble watches, that buy parts and put their stamp on it. We do it all, up to the very last screw. That's the difference. We're autonomous. We do the watch boxes, the watch face, the moving parts. It's only the straps that we don't make. We have a, uh, one of your modern wristwatches here. Tell me about this piece. Here we've got the Bugatti Supersport. It's distinctive as the profile is very ergonomic. The narrow part allows you to wind, and the thick part stores the mechanical energy, which transmits energy to the spring, with the time shown on the side. This is the second model of the Bugatti. The first one allowed us to acquire lots of knowledge in order to make this new model and technique, which you can see is physically designed like steps, so up from the lowest to the highest point in three stages. One of the main reasons I wanted to come here was because you have a restoration workshop. The restoration workshop is the company's soul. Restoration is a fountain of knowledge. We can acquire a lot of knowledge of watchmaking's heritage through restoration. Also, it allows us to reflect on how a certain watch or mechanism was created, particularly understanding the tools used at the time, which, although well made, were simple compared to today. So restoration grants us an unprecedented insight. I've got an example here, a pocket watch showing the hours. It strikes at each quarter. The moving parts are splendidly decorated in steel, the stamps shaped like snakes. These steels are polished and made to look blue, which represents the artistic aspect of watchmaking. It's not just about making a watch to tell the time, it's about making a watch for the pleasure. It's about creating its components in a very aesthetic manner. Michel Parmigiani, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your education. Hey, merci. Merci à vous.